All right, today we're going to start chapter nine. Looks like we're gonna hopefully get through about the first five sections. So as you can see, I have it listed as nine one to nine five. And what we're gonna take a look at today is something called a pointer, okay? A pointer in the program. Now, for the 19 out of 21 folks who did the code listings, Hopefully you have a little bit of an idea of what's going on here and what we're doing. And um, this is just going to knock or fill in those blanks that you may have had along the line. But what a pointer does is it reminds me going all the way back to strings. When we first declared a string, we said string str. Okay. And what happens here is What's stored at STR is some kind of memory location. And most of the time these memory locations are given in hex and you see something like A.92, something crazy. But what's stored in string is just this address that says, I'm going over to this starting location in memory, this zero X A E nine to whatever it is, and I'm gonna go from there. And the way the string worked was it slowly moved through character at a time until I found some way that the string ends, some invisible character. Some, they're, they're called delimiters, but slash zero is probably what it was to say, okay, so I finally reached the end of my string. Now, why did we need an address for string? Well, the reason was we didn't know how long this was going to be. So to allocate memory, like I would if I went int x, I need to say, hey, I need four bytes of memory. Boom, done, okay? With a string, not knowing how big it is, I'm gonna allocate enough memory to store this address, okay? So it talks about an address in memory. Now, what a pointer does is pretty much the exact same thing. It stores a memory address of a location, okay? It stores a memory address of a location. And when we declare it, we have to declare what size we want at that memory location. So that's a little bit of an overview. Let's see what we got. Um, in order to get the address of a variable, we're gonna use the ampersand. And I know my music people out there are saying it's a treble clef or something like that. But I try, that's, I, I don't know. You got the idea. I'm saying it's an ampersand. It kind of looks like an ampersand. We're going to go with that. Okay. So in code listing 9.1, you actually had a, a, a code listing that when you printed it out, you saw it displayed something as hexadecimal. And if I grab my book, it had a real uh, camera there. It did the create the variable X. I need four bytes. Okay. So now I want to go to that memory address. And when I do it, I use the ampersand. And when it displayed, it gave me some kind of hex. 0x8f05. Now, quick question to you. I keep saying hexadecimal. What is hexadecimal? Hexadecimal is a counting system, right? Binary is a counting system. We go 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on. Hexadecimal is the same thing, but instead of going up to the base 2, it's base 16. So in hexadecimal, I'm using numbers that look like uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, Instead of 10, I use A, B, C, D, E, F, and F is 16. So does anybody know off the top of their head what the next number would be in hexadecimal? So if I was counting in hexadecimal, shooby dooby dooby doo, and I got to 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, what would be next? Wouldn't it be 1, 0? Yeah, 1, 0, good. It's like 10, kind of but it's one zero, it's a 16 and no ones if we did conversions. If you take CPS 230 with me, we do a lot of those um, conversions between number systems. 
base two, base eight, base 16. I think it's something important you need as a column sign measure. But yeah, it becomes one zero and it would go all the way up to one F. Then it will become two zero and go all the way up to two F and so on. So that's just a little bit of a hexadecimal. All right, pointer variables. We've seen some pointer variables already. An, an array, the name is a pointer to where the array starts. And remember, when we start passing, our parameter list has, excuse me, our argument is just the name of the array. So it's passing the address and that's it. Reference variables. We worked with pointers. We used the ampersand. Again, back dealing with uh, functions, we were passing variables back and forth. We were just passing the address because we wanted the variables to be able to, ch to change. An example was that um, for the array, we just call a method show values. We passed in numbers. Numbers was just the name of the array, which is the address of the array. Down here under reference variables, we passed in donut and you know we made it a reference variable so that if I change the number of donuts, that it would actually return with the new value. Okay. And then finally, pointer variables, what we get into today, we're going to be creating our own, being able to come up with our own. Okay, so definitions. I want to declare a pointer. A uh, couple of de declarations right here. Int, ampersand pointer. This says I want to create a variable named PTR that's going to point to a spot in memory that when I go there, I'm talking about four bytes because I'm saying it's an int. A second way I could do this instead, but most of the time everybody does int space asterisk pointer. Okay. And this asterisk is actually going to be used more than once. So int did it, did it. We don't, we don't really like that one so much. So we don't use it. Another thing is just like if I said int x, int x equals nine. I can give an initial value, int, pointer, asterisk pointer equals null pointer. Now, did any of you have any trouble with null pointer when you typed up your code listings? Okay, no. some IDEs, even some versions of Bloodshed, I've seen where they don't like null pointer. Instead, they want to see null, all capitals, or something else that you could use in place of null pointer, a zero. Okay, a zero would work for null pointer. Okay, because it's all that ASCII value zero, that very beginning thing. All right, so why why work with pointers? Well, I have a, a, a real benefit. You can indirectly access and modify variables being pointed to. Uh, some of you just heard wah, 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 wah. Well, what I'm saying is we can point to a variable and by using, again, I said, we're going to use the asterisk two different ways. Here it's asterisk pointer to declare a pointer. Down here it's used to what we call dereference a pointer, or it's going to help us get the value at that pointer. Okay. So again, it dereferences it. It gives me the value of the memory location I'm pointing to. Questions up to this point? An example of that was code listing 9.3. As you can see, I create a variable X. I give it an initial value of null pointer when I create my pointer to an int. I say PTR, which is a pointer, is allowed to get the address of whatever x is. So if x's address was that 0, x, f2, whatever, whatever, pointer now has that value stored. Okay, We can go and display them out. And then down here, we're saying, hey, what happens at line 19? Asterisk pointer equals 100. I dereference what the pointer is pointing to. And basically, this does what? It assigns 100 to the uh, X. Right. This guy actually says that's the same as X. And now we're saying X gets the new value of 100. 
And hopefully when you type it in, it's actually pretty good code listings that you saw how we were able to change the values. And just like code listing 94 you typed in, we got the address and we dereferenced it, right? Because we can't say pointer equals 100 because it's the address. But when I dereference pointer, I can say add 100 to whatever is at that address. Why? I can add 100 to all of them. So the initial values are 25, 50, and 75. And after I add 100 to each of them, I see I get 125, 150, and 175. Questions? There's more. So for an array where the variable is storing the beginning of the array, could you add a value to the pointer to get the next item in the array? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're going to kind of see that in a moment. Okay. Now, Thanks. we have this relationship between pointers and arrays. Because if you think about it, they both point to a memory location where I'm going to store blocks of code. Um, maybe a, a four byte block if I'm storing integers, a two byte block if I'm storing characters. So when I declare these, I'm saying what size I'm going to declare. And for example, if I said int numbers sub square brackets 10, 20, 30, 40, on and on and on. Okay, I have an array. It's size int, so I'm going to be storing in four bytes each. Now, if I wanted to get the address, I would use numbers. And if I wanted to do it, I could do number sub zero. Okay. If I wanted to use the array the same as a pointer, I could say dereference numbers. Go to this memory address and what's there. So this and this are actually the same it would give me the number 10. What if I wanted to move to the second item in the array? Well, you know number sub one is gonna work. But if I wanted to use a pointer, use the pointer side of numbers, I would say numbers plus one. Now the plus one knows what to add. It knows to add four bytes. Because when I declared it, I declared it of type in. So the plus one, all this in parentheses, is going to move me over four bytes. And then I'm going to dereference it and get the value at that position. So what I was asking before was kind of like a star numbers plus four, but with the plus four outside of the parentheses. That's going to give you, right, that's going to give you, so if I said star numbers plus four, with this array, what would that give me? Would that be the second item, the 20, or the location of the, the location of the 20? Nope, that would give me 14. Because remember, this guy oh, yeah. is yeah. the same as that, so it just gives me a 10. And then when I add four, I would get 14. Right. Now I got your question. Okay. Uh, quickly looking over some more of the code listings. I like this one. We have an array numbers and you see how I can traverse through the array. And when I go through the array, I'm doing numbers plus count so that I can print out all the values that are stored in that array. But I'm using the idea of a pointer, not an actual pointer, but just the idea of a pointer. You typed in code listing 93. Now I have a pointer called double pointer and it's gonna to point to a double. Okay, so when I come in here, I have, uh, oh, let's see, I have coins and right away I say double pointer gets the address of where coins begins. So now I'm actually using the name of a pointer instead of the name of the array. And I can go through and I can actually take the pointer name and add square brackets to it and use subscripts. So these two are in fact interchangeable. And just like down here, 
instead of using the pointer name, I'm going to use the address of coins and I'm going to do the plus one like we did in the last page. I know you're all saying this is so cool, right? All right. So a lot of you typed in nine nine. Tell me what happens in nine nine in your words. Starting to get tired of hearing my own voice. What happens in nine nine? I have an array called set. Or did you just type it in, it compiled and you got output and you moved on? I'm rereading over it again because okay. I did it at like five o'clock this morning right after work. I know, I know about 10 of you did them this morning. Yeah. Does it like display it in ascending and descending order? Okay. But yeah, you're, you're exactly right. It goes ascending. It goes from low to high. So number is my pointer. It's pointing to an integer location and we're letting it get the value of the array, which is all good. Now I'm going to go through and dereference it, display it. And then what does line 20 do? Num pointer plus plus. It tells us to go to the next address. Yeah, it's going to move it. Oh, so it's going to take this. So uh, this is really a shortcut for what? If he had written this out, the author, it would be what? Num pointer equals num pointer plus one. Yeah, num pointer plus one. Okay, so it's gonna it's gonna move me over a location. So num pointer when it first starts, it starts at that memory address, and then this is going to over four bytes. So my pointer keeps moving over four bytes, over four bytes. So all of a sudden, my pointer gets to a point where it's right here after the four bytes that 40 is stored in. So my pointer is sitting all the way out here. So now when I come down to this second array, check out what happens here. First thing I do is subtract with the postfix subtraction. I subtract four bytes, which is gonna move me over here to the beginning of 40 and I print it out. Then I subtract one again, which moves me over four bytes and allows me to print to 35. And it just keeps moving back and back and back. So yeah, it goes ascending by using this little trick of moving the pointer over. And then once the pointer gets to the end, it's actually gonna go descending by subtracting off of the pointer. That's kind of clever. But again, thinking of it as these guys are all four byte blocks and every time I add one, I'm adding four bytes in memory location to move over. What do you think about that? Uh -oh, I wrote in my book. Oh, man. Well, we already know the answers to that one. I'm looking on page 518, and I have 9.4 listed. And I probably wrote it in pen. Yep. But it goes through and it says, what are the values of X, Y, and Z? So to start with, X is 50, Y is 60, and Z is 70. And the first thing we do is we let pointer get the address of X. So pointer gets the address of X. What am I doing here? I'm dereferencing pointer to get the value that's there and multiplying it by 10, 50. Now letting pointer get the address of Y, I'm gonna dereference it so I get the value, multiply it by 50. Finally, I'm going to let pointer get the address of Z, I'm gonna dereference it, multiply it by two, 140. Okay, and again, I'm looking at 9.8 and take a couple seconds and look at it. I already have the answers of valid, valid, invalid, valid, and invalid. I want you to make sure that you understand what's going on with those.
eat. I var eat. I create a pointer and I'm giving it an address right away. I'm creating a pointer, giving it an address right away. Int I var, just a variable. Here I am doing the same thing, except I just put both of those on one line. Uh oh, I put invalid. Float F var int, yeah boy. I'm creating a pointer to an integer, which is gonna hold four bytes. And then I go and yeah, I'm getting the address of something that's not gonna like. Int nums 50. I'm creating a pointer. See again, this is why the asterisk is nice to put here when I put multiple ones on the line. And right away I'm giving it, remember what nums is. It's the name of the array, but it's also the starting address of the array. So that's valid. Int, I create a pointer and I'm get, uh oh, what's wrong with E? You declare the variable after the pointer yeah. and it's not gonna work. Right, it's, it's just out of order, out of order. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do today. Um, I'm going to have you write a program, uh, page 553, number two, and it's nice and easy. Write a program that um, creates an array large enough to hold a user-defined number of test scores. Once all the scores are entered, the array should be passed to a function that sorts them in ascending order. We already have some of those functions. We can just go grab one. Another function should be called to calculate the average. The program should display the scores. That sounds like a piece of cake, right? So I want you to go and do that with arrays. When you're done, I want you to then change that program by substituting pointers in instead of the arrays. So do it all with arrays first, because we're, we're cracking our knuckles. We just finished chapter eight. We're good with arrays. We're good with uh, grabbing one of our sorts and throwing in there. Once you have that done, you feel good about it, then I want you to modify that program to use pointer notation. 